everybody, it's Chris Denman. It's We Are Live, a very special one-on-one today. Uh, quarantine entertainment for you and yours. Gildart Jackson, renowned actor, voiceover talent, and uh, you can catch him on Instagram with Fireside. <laughs> Reading. Reading. See, this is the way I, this, I gotta get your, I gotta get your, I wish, uh, it, this is just like a move that I do. No, I don't, my brain doesn't work, Gildart. This is, <laughs> this is what's happening. So nice of you to join us on We Are Live, man. Thank you so much. How are you, sir? I'm very well. I, I'm, I'm great. We're all well. And how about you? How are you doing? Uh, I've managed to fashion my hair into an acceptable just hold just for this, and like the it's background's fantastic. black. <laughs> Decent flow. You you appreciate yeah, it? Yeah, okay. it's beautiful. Okay. Well, I, I I appreciate you wearing the uh, wearing the tie and staying uh, very proper yourself. That's so, right. Happy to have you here, man. So you're you're locked up in quarantine, but this is something that I feel like maybe a guy like you with the uh, the resume that you've put together, maybe you're staying busy. You do so much voiceover work. You obviously are are, are staying busy with Instagram. Uh, what has it been like? I guess in the last what two months, eight weeks, wherever we're yeah. at right now for you. Um. Well, we're we are incredibly lucky. So uh, we've, we've, we, we all get on well. I might have my wife and two daughters and uh, the, the two girls are 18 and 15. And, and so, you know, it's the end of time for them all to be at home. And we're having a special bumper, everybody not allowed to leave the house for two months. So <laughs> in a way that's wonderful. And uh, we're lucky we, I, I was on doing my, my wife's TV show called The Bold Type, and we came to the end of that um, uh, just before the quarantine. So, uh, you know, we were sort of planning a little time at home. And um, then now we're at home for a long time, and I have the audiobooks that I do from home. And then I decided to do this idea called Fireside Reading. And uh, the idea there was I just wanted to. When I was a kid, uh, I got read to a lot by my folks. That means and then when a lot. My dad, yeah, it, it, you know what? It's a lovely way to just have a book given to you. And um, and when my dad was older and, and I was older and he, he was not very well, I went home to England and I read to him in front of the fire one of the books that he had read to me. And I thought, it's a really lovely thing to do. And then I got doing audio books and I had the idea just to sit and read in front of the fire, sort of an embellished audio book. Uh, and it suddenly seemed to me when coronavirus hit that there might be people like my parents who were alone at home and wanted a little company. And so a friend told me how to do Instagram live and another friend told me how to get on to put things on YouTube. And so I started doing a regular five o'clock every day on Instagram at Fireside Reading. And then a regular upload of that uh, onto YouTube. And people have been finding it. And wonderfully, people have been uh, sort of comforted and given companionship by the simple act of reading to them. Uh, I read, I'm, I'm reading at the moment, Great Expectations, which is a novel by Charles Dickens, which one of the classic English novels, it was written 160 years ago, but it's just so beautifully relevant and fun. And um, we're, we're about three quarters of the way through. It's a long book. I've been reading for 35 <laughs> days and uh, a chapter a day. So about 20 minutes a day. Yeah. And if anybody wants to get on board, uh, you can catch up by going to YouTube, the Fireside Reading channel on YouTube, and um, and watching each chapter. And uh, it's just a simple way to really relax and just feel warm. <laughs> it's such a wild way that you can connect in such with so many people in such a primitive manner, too. Like 160 yeah. years ago, when that was uh, first put out, like think about the changes that have happened since then. And I don't, I don't know that things now as great as uh, as of artists and people we have now. I don't know that that's going to be relevant in 160 years the way time works now. Well, I think there will be some things that stand the test of time. I think 
Um, but interestingly, the, the sort of form of the entertainment is very similar to the way Dickens wrote. He actually wrote in installments. He didn't write one long book and then release it. He wrote for a magazine and he wrote a chapter, actually more like two chapters and put it out. And so his book was released over the course of a year and a half. And people would get the magazine at the news agent, run home <laughs> and sit and frequently sit in front of the fire and you know, a, a kindly uncle or somebody would read, a guy who had a nice voice would read to the rest <laughs> of the family. And it was the entertainment if, uh, if uh, you know, the alternative was somebody played the piano, but really this was the entertainment of those days. And so in a way we're recreating this almost primal uh, urge that we have, if we want to find it, to be read to. That, that makes sense. And it's, it's, it's simple when you start to think about the connections that could be made through that. I am curious as, uh, as we move forward, if maybe you're going to tap out at the end of this and you're going to end up doing, uh, like, uh, pic more picture heavy books on TikTok or something, <laughs> you're going to be like, listen, guys, I gave you all I had. I gave you so much. <laughs> There's so much reading, but do you, as somebody that does that for a living, it has to bring you some joy. Oh, a lot. I mean, it, it's, I suppose, I don't know why I like it, but I think maybe because I'm good at it. That's, uh, that's A number one usually, right? <laughs> right, it is yeah. the way that works. It is, and I, so I like doing it. I've actually done a couple of kids' books. I have some nevies and nieces, and I put them on the, the fireside reading thing too. So understanding that there are many parents who are, going through a difficult time right now because what do you do with the little really little kids how do you entertain them rather and and yeah it's a way to you know put them in front of a, a screen but it's just me reading a beautiful old book i did two beatrix potter books the tale of peter rabbit and the tale of benjamin bunny, benjamin bunny um and people can look and find them on fireside reading too um I actually have felt the other way. I haven't felt like I want to stop. I promised everyone I would finish Great Expectations, whatever yeah. happened, even if we got let out of our houses earlier. But <laughs> I've, I'm thinking now that even without the coronavirus, there's people who just like having this company. And, you know, loneliness right. is another thing that happens to us in, because of all the connectivity. For some reason, we, we get a little lonely, though people do. Yeah. And um, I, I don't exactly know where I'm going to go with it, but uh, I might continue to do it. And, uh, and some, you know, other books, books that I like, books that people want. Uh, it's great. It's, I'm really enjoying it. Pleasant is the is the word that comes to mind for sure, and I'm and I'm curious as well. It's funny because uh, somebody with the uh, the talent and the resume that you have can make it look very easy. Where it, it does look simple, but it's like, well, <laughs> you're you're dealing with someone who's doing this for a living for many years and doing it at a high level. So I, I think that there is a place for that and. Let's be honest. This Netflix will take a swing at a lot of things, man. Like this is this is something that absolutely could be. And then who knows? Maybe it's just a a, a gateway to your next uh, acting job because somebody saw your Instagram. That's the way. It, it's it's a weird world that you all live in now. I feel like yeah. with, the, with the opportunities and and everything. I wanted to back up just a bit. You had mentioned your family being home um, with the just natural progression of I don't know if your oldest daughter's going to college or anything like that. I mean, is it, are you looking at this as uh, are you and your wife looking at this as something to be like, okay, one last imprint that we're going to put on and uh, make sure she's lined up. Uh, I, and I'm sure you've been working very hard the last 18 years, but how yeah. are you, how are you and your wife, uh, I guess, looking at this, you mentioned it a little bit, but is there anything special that you're trying to say like, Hey, we're just going to take advantage of every minute. Or are you really going uh, structured and saying like, here's what you're going to learn? No, I think we're much, we're, I mean, I believe in learning, but sure. uh, 
I, you know, most of the work, most of the job is done. Um, yeah. And fortunately, they're both really, uh, you know, they're my daughters, but I, I think they're wonderful. Um, the oldest one is finishing high school. Uh, so she's graduating, well, however that's going to look in a couple of weeks, <laughs> um, which is unfortunate. But, you know, this is of, of all the misfortunes that people are going through. It's, it's a small one. Um, uh, and then she's, she's going to NYU. Um, oh, that's exciting. That's yeah, congratulations. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We're very proud of her. And, and, um, she leaves hopefully at the end of o August. Um, she might have to start here, I suppose in LA and, and do online, but hopefully we'll be out and everything by then. I, who knows what better, what better in-home teachers when both your parents are, <laughs> well, she's pretty, she's pretty keen to get out of the home and uh, get, sure. but so at, right now with, I mean, the key I, for us, we like to have dinner all together. And, that's great. And, has that and, been common know, throughout? I mean, and yeah. I, I, has it been? Okay, good, good. Because when you have two working actors as parents, I, I mean, I have to think that there's probably some challenges. Again, you're very humble. I'm sure you're, you realize like, well, you know, other people deal with other things, but the reality is you got to work. You got to, and if you're yeah. recording somewhere, I mean, I'm sure both of you recorded in LA mostly, but at the same time, there's location stuff. There's complications that arise on all levels. Yeah. Yeah. We've been lucky throughout this. We've had the ability to get everybody, our whole family together a lot. Um, the latest show that Laura's doing called The Bold Type shoots in Montreal. So that's been more challenging than we've really had before. Sure. Uh, but then uh, I got to play her husband on the show. So we get to see each other a lot and the kids are older and the kids can, um, you know, we live close to the school. So, uh, you know, all in all, we've just been very lucky and, and haven't had to break up the family much. Um, but some, that's, but yeah, and that's that yeah. happens too. But that's also a sign of success, right? That you're like, well, mm -hmm. kids are going to get taken care of, but I'm going to be working too. Um, throughout your career, you all have worked on a couple projects together. Is that yeah? Do you you have to enjoy it because it's really easy to just say we don't work together. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're going to save things. Uh, what I guess just some advice maybe to people that would I think it's a, applicable to all <laughs> acting is probably. Uh, interesting to look at but to all different verticals of where people are going to work or be together it's just couples working together in general has to be quite a uh, a hill to climb at times or maybe you find it to be very simple I, I mean i think it's definitely challenging i think i think i suspect having a good relationship is a challenge you know, it's something we definitely work at and have worked at. We've been married quite a long time now. Um, and uh, I, I, I feel like, you know, if, if it's just been an extension of our marriage, which at times it's been fun to do. At times it's been, you know, uh, frustrating. We've been frustrated with each other. But I don't think we would stop doing it. It's just, you know, we enjoy each other's company and she's an intensely creative person and I like to create and we do, we live together. And so we do things together. She just did two little videos at home, one for uh, both singing, um, one for a fundraiser and one for Disney. Uh, and we were the full service production team. I was <laughs> running the camera, my daughter was running the camera. We cut it together. Melora was acting, and so it was just a you know uh, all at home and really fun. Was she uh, was she a good uh, was she a fair star? Was she did she talk down the, to her her crew? How did that go? Yeah, the 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 really amazing thing is that. Uh, and I don't know whether people might not know this, that she, she was, my wife is Melora Hardin, who's on uh, The Office and Transparent and now The Bold Type. And um, 
she's also got an amazing voice and she has sung Chicago on Broadway and has done the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, she did Les Mis at the Hollywood Bowl, uh, played Fontaine. And really anything that I did with the camera in both of these videos would have been completely forgiven by the fact that she's so talented and attractive. <laughs> she just eats up the screen and, and um, so easy to do the whole thing. And she's also, you know, talk about being good at your job. We did all of it. The first video, we just did it sort of uh, lots of little bits once. And then the second video was just one take really. And, uh, and it's fantastic and it's that's a complicated song she did uh, mother knows best from tangled uh and if anybody can find it it's really very very good that's so impressive too and that has to be <laughs> i wonder this is the weird place where my head goes um i wonder how you impart that onto your children that this isn't normal <laughs> <laughs> hey, not, not everybody's parents uh, have, you know, exceeding talent. And, you know, you're, that's very true of what you're saying of your wife, but you're in an upper echelon of acting and, and voice work and, and different parts of uh, the entertainment industry. So I, I do wonder, like, I wonder if there is a way to just be like, hey, be easy on your friend's parents or <laughs> don't expect too much out of the first guy you meet at NYU because... <laughs> You've been in a weird uh, lab of creativity for the last 18 years. Yeah, but I think she's going to find those people when she goes out into the world and be attracted to those people who who do stuff. And um, she herself is, she, she's, she, there's a movie, she did a movie a couple of years ago um, where she got to play a, a bully. Uh, he's a very good actor. It's called uh, I Kill Giants. It's currently on Hulu all over America. Um, and uh, yeah, and and it's a, it's a really good movie and she's very good in it. So, you know, she she's going to gravitate to people who can, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, it's also, you know, talent aside, it's fun. You know, they yeah. call it play, doing a play for, for a reason. It's just, goofing around now you've got tv movie credits different things of, uh, of that nature video game voiceovers that, uh, all over the place um where did you get your start what are you, what is your training what is your background and and what uh, what was the first i guess uh big gig that you felt like uh, hey i'm an actor well that's a good question because it was i have a circuitous route um so i didn't train to be an actor I trained, strangely, to be a lawyer. So I came, I was what's called a barrister in England, which is the guy who wears the wig and stands up in court. Um, did you get to keep one? I didn't practice. Did you get to keep I didn't, one? I, no, I didn't buy one because I didn't <laughs> practice. Okay. I qualified and then I came to America because I wanted to see what it was like. And I loved it and I stayed here and I you know, messed around for several years. And then I got serious and I took, I, I was, I had enough education to take the California bar exam and I sort of settling in, in LA and I became a, a lawyer, an entertainment lawyer in, in LA. Is that right? And um, I worked here until I was about 30. Um, just over 30, I think. And um, then my boss, who was a fantastic chap, very, very good lawyer, sm small law firm, but he was really quite a, a, a player in that world. Um, he asked me to be his partner. And I realized that if I said yes, that was it. And that would be line in my life. And, and I, I was, you know, while I was very fond of him, I wasn't very fond of the job or necessarily very good at it. And so I said, well, actually, that's very kind of you, but I think I need to quit. A 30-year-old. Yeah, which is not what he was expecting me to say. <laughs> that was your jump-off point. Wow. Yeah. And so I had been doing a little bit of, uh, you know, training and going to school in, in the evenings when I could. 
as an actor. Um, and um, I just, I, when, I, when I, I gave him notice and then it went on and on because I was involved in several things that he needed my help for and then I could, it was very hard to leave and, and sad. <laughs> but um, ultimately I left and I spent a year doing any plays in LA that I could, that would have me, small, tiny little. And uh, I got an agent and then I got a job. My agent really got me a job uh, doing a few lines, a small part on General Hospital. And um, it, uh, for some reason they liked me and I just kept, they kept on <laughs> writing my bit and it went on and on and on, went on for about a year. And so um, that was the first, my first job in front of a camera and a good one to sort of learn a little bit about how to do it. What a great start. Yeah. And you look at that and you think there's a few things that jump out. <laughs> it's like you had to immediately think this is easy. <laughs> I don't, I don't mean, maybe you did, maybe the, maybe there's anxiety with being on camera and everything, but I'm just thinking the amount of, of reading that you do as a lawyer and as a busy lawyer and a successful lawyer that got offered partner at 30 or, or however old you were, it just, that's, that's, that's hard work and taxing on your brain. What was the thought whenever you got that first acting paycheck? I mean, maybe you found it to be more difficult. Well, no, I didn't find it to be more difficult, but it was certainly more difficult to find the work. Yes. Uh, you know, and it, and it's continued to be, uh, lawyering and that particular job just, you know, it fell into my lap <laughs> in a way that, you know, that and I, I, I was not, I'm, I'm not especially smart, but I was very good at taking exams. So I was able to sort of qualify without too much bother. And then I knew nothing about being a lawyer, but I happened to get a job with this guy. This was in the days pre-internet. And I went down to the law library where I'd been studying to take the California bar and found a book on the best entertainment lawyers in town. And I knew I didn't want to be in a big firm. And I just made some phone calls and he had me in Monday and said, okay, why don't you start tomorrow? And I started and, and, uh, now he was, he was difficult and he was, <laughs> When I opened my desk, there was a sort of uh, a bunch of lawyers' cards stacked up like a like a tombstone, like a like a graveyard of lawyers' cards, one after the other. And these these were were my predecessors, of course. Uh, and he, you know, he went through lawyers and secretaries because he was a hard taskmaster. But for some reason, he and I got on well, and um, and. Well, ultimately, you know, it was, yeah, I was fond of him and he was fond of me and, and it, 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 it messed it up a bit when I said I needed to quit because that really was the end of that friendship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, they don't, guys like that do not take uh, any form of rejection well, typically. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it, it's probably why they're so good at what they do. What yeah. did you, did you represent clients or were you doing back work? Like how... Do you anybody of note that you uh, that you repped, and then you're seeing maybe two questions? Did you yeah. note? Did you rep anyone of note that we would know today? And then second question: Did you rep anyone, and then run into them on a on a set five years later, and they're like, "Did you? Are you here for something legal? Yeah, what's going on?" Uh, I I didn't run into anybody. I still have not run into anybody. But I was so he was he had been really successful as a lawyer in the music world. Um, and I didn't, you know, looking for the job, I just said entertainment lawyer and I applied and got a job. And then I suddenly found myself dealing with music issues. Um, so he had many clients who were amazing. Um, is, probably is the, the type of is this the type of firm that's putting the brown M and M 
the brown M and M clauses in these contracts? Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, except fortunately we didn't deal with you know lunatic uh, clients. We dealt with very sane, wonderfully successful people. So uh, you know uh, Neil Young, BB King, Aretha Franklin, wow. um, and a whole bunch of producers around them. Now I did. I started as a complete greenhorn who would do some research on points. Uh, and years later, I was, um, it was very much my boss's firm. I, I, I would, uh, I would handle some stuff and I, I, we, I had, you know, occasionally some court work turned up and I would go down and I did a trial and I did a lot of motion work and, um, but, but although not for the people that I, I mentioned, um, you know, mostly it was just fascinating to be in that world and see how that sort of behind the scenes worked. And it was edifying for me because it made me realize that I didn't really want to be behind the scenes. I wanted to be in front of the scenes. That's it. And, uh, and whilst I, you know, I, I don't do what uh, musicians do, uh, they want to try to entertain. No, that, that makes perfect sense. And I'm glad that you found that out because if you are just a lover of the arts or entertainment, it's almost, you know, you work at the donut shop, you never want to eat a donut again. And you yeah. like, what live music is, all right, us, and now we're all quarantined. I personally, um, if people aren't watching your Instagram, they, I, there's so many people playing, and I've interviewed people, and we do these things that we're, they'll play three or four songs, and we talk. It's mesmerizing. It's, it yeah. is. So if you, were, if you were in a position where you didn't enjoy music, that that could be tough. That's not, uh, that's not a fun thing for a creative person to deal with. Right, right, and and also to to see, you know, my talents don't lie in that direction, and. Um, to be able to appreciate people when it does lie in that direction and then try and work out, you know, where, where I would go, right. how I would try to make a, a path for myself. Now you were, uh, you had a big part on the TV show, I would believe it was Charmed, right? Please mm. say I didn't mess up. I was like, <laughs> I remember it. And it's one of those things where you don't want to, it's Charmed. Like there is a specific audience for that. Are you still recognized? And did you have, I'm just guessing with the audience, you had to have some either funny or awkward moments with people seeing you that watched you all the time on that TV show. Well, especially because my character um, was not very nice. <laughs> yes, okay, yeah. So you were not a nice character. Yeah, not a very, uh, some people took it that way. Um, and so now I, I quite frequently, uh, sort of young ladies who are sort of 30 will look at me and go, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, accuse me still of, you know, killing some baby or something. <laughs> <laughs> but can yeah. we both admit... <laughs> That's... I thought I was saving the world, but you know, little did we know. <laughs> but see, there's a joy in that too, because I'm picturing myself watching this situation go down, and then your wife is like leaned over, like looking at something in the in the store, and they're freaking out, having a moment with you, and then your wife, who wherever they probably yeah, from the office, <laughs> turns Jan, around and they're like, Jan walks in. What's happening? <laughs> yeah. Jan walks in and says, "Honey, did we get chicken?" <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just blowing people's minds and I'm, I'm sure that's a fun part of your relationship well uh yeah. in regards to uh projects that you have post quarantine uh mm. i do know, you know jobs are super crazy to get a hold of so there you're you're very lucky if you make it to a tv series do you have something that you want to pursue is it back to the grind of getting on a series again what is uh, your career, what do you want your career to look like, uh, you know, whenever things are somewhat normal? Well, I mean, the, so The Bold Type, which is a freeform show, 
is still going on as far as we know you know who knows what the future holds sure uh for production anywhere um so that's happening um and we both enjoy doing that which would be great yeah um i do i'm playing a part that i can't talk about because it's oh. very quiet well, very yeah. uh we also shoots uh somewhere else um a, a a video game um which hopefully will start up again um mm -hmm. and that a lot of fun and then the final thing is that as i said this fireside reading has has a thing has a sort of it, I, I i feel it in my heart i enjoy doing it i'm right now incredibly grateful to be able just the other day uh, a a nurse wrote to me and said i get back from the hospital and i just love to just sit down have a glass of wine and just relax with them, whatever the last chapter was and young kids are learning to you know learning to speak english by following along with the book as right? i read it yeah that's uh, so nice. kids in in spain and and in uh, czechoslovakia and and you know a, I don't know what the future will hold with this as an idea, but I definitely want to try to pursue it because I I feel like in the in the world that we live, where yep. loneliness mm -hmm. and also speed, uh, the speed of life, sometimes I, there's a reason why so many people that I know anyway uh, meditate at the moment and are finding the, the slowing down a way to try to slow it down a little bit. And just sit sitting with me as I read you a chapter of some lovely old book in front of the fire. Uh, I feel like there are people. I now I know there are people out there who like it, who feel relaxed and comforted by it. And whether they will after we get released for, from coronavirus, uh, I don't know. But I do kind of sense that they will and the ability to find a great book that is you know you can look on youtube now i mean you can pretty soon you can watch great expectations but if i did 30 books people would be able to come and do that and then i'd have to work out some way to to make money on my end but uh that's not what i'm doing now what i'm doing now is a straight gift but um you know, when it gets to that, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to do it, but I'd love to try to extend that out into the world somehow. I think that's great. And even if you have that in your back, that's what's great about kind of um, like these people, are your friends, I get it, that that get you jobs and, and bring you on to TV series and that's your world. There's also a nice part where you can just have a really popular Instagram channel. And if that grows correctly, then that's a source of revenue and joy. So I, I, I like the thought yeah. process on that. That's definitely something that, um, whether it is a Netflix or a Hulu or something that, that takes that concept and runs with it. But the other part of that is you can just have a really cool Instagram page. Like that's, right. I, I like that. Yeah. And and YouTube is a great venue to be able to see it at all times. And absolutely. And yeah, I mean, if, if Netflix or one of those comes calling, I definitely feel like, it would be another arm of their business just to have great books read in front, you know, simply read by by an actor who's good at it. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what what the future holds there. Well, I hope that happens, and I hope that uh, you Indeed. continue uh, a, a very peaceful and fun uh, quarantine with the family. Gildart, so much fun chatting with you. You're such a talented person. I, I really appreciate you putting up with uh, every technical... <laughs> And, and I'm going to, I'm going to leave you, Chris, with my, I, I realize that you're from uh, St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And um, am I correct that you're, no, I think I'm, so my first job, okay. even before uh, General Hospital, I did a play in a small theater and uh, I got this sort of Hollywood moment of uh, somebody coming to the stage door afterwards and saying, hey, 
I could you give a message to the guy who played I was doing the seagull to the guy who played Trigorin I'd like to see him I'm a Hollywood uh, film director and I went around and this guy said hi um, I'm making a film would you like to be in it <laughs> I of course immediately thought he he put me up and and this was uh, some a friend you know right tr tricky and he said, no, 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 it's called The Big Brass Ring. It was the last movie written by Orson Welles. And my name is George Hickenlooper. George Hickenlooper. And George Hickenlooper was from St. Louis. Uh, and his brother, sadly, George died five years ago. He made some really great films. Um, his brother is... I think John Hickenlooper, and he is the, I think maybe governor now of uh, Denver, of, said, of Colorado. It says George ended up living, or he passed away early at 47 in Denver. Yeah. So that would make sense that his brother, that is, uh, I'm embarrassed. But he's from St. Louis, right? St. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. from St. Louis. Um, yeah, wow, he passed away very early. It was so sad. Yeah, and I'm I'm so embarrassed. I didn't. Uh, maybe it's one of those where you you kind of remember it or you knew it at one point, and it just hasn't came up uh, anytime recently. That's so wild too. And there were on uh, on the office. They, there were three or four. There were three for sure actors from St. Louis that were you know big parts of that show. Yeah, <laughs> it's really yeah. a strange thing sometimes. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I certainly enjoyed uh, having the conversation. If you ever want to come right. back, I got all day, man. I'd love to talk yeah. some more. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure on my end, Chris. Thank you so much, and good luck with everything, and stay well. Same to you. Thanks, Gildar. Okay, okay. bye.